Rounding, Comparing, and Ordering Decimals, Lesson 8b. I really hope you saw Lesson 8a. If you haven't, just click on the description and you can find it. We round decimals with the same rules we use for rounding whole numbers. So when we do whole number rounding, if the digit to the right of the place value we're rounding to, if the digit to the right is a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, the number stays the same and all the numbers on the right become zeros. And if the digit to the right is a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, the number goes up by 1. So we have 428. If we're rounding to the hundreds place, the 2 is telling the 4 to stay the same. See? Because it falls in this category. So it just stays the same. So it's going to round to 400. In this case, the 8 is in the next group right here. So it's going to tell it to go up by 1, so the 4 is going to become a 5, and then they're going to turn into 0, so we have 500. The only difference we have for rounding decimals is that instead of changing these di digits to the right to zeros, they just drop off and aren't written at all. So if we had 0. 0.428, the 2 tells the 4 to stay the same, and they drop off. The 2 and the 8 drop off, so we have 0. 0.4. If we have 0. 0.482, the 8 tells the 4 to go up to a 5, and then the 8 and the 2 drop off, and we just have 0.5. See? So it's the same rules. It's just we don't have zeros now. They just drop off, and they're not needed anymore. Okay? So the digit to the right is telling that digit what to do. So whichever place value it's telling us to round to, we identify that place value, and then whatever digit is to the right tells it what to do. Okay, so that 4 would tell the 2 to stay the same. All right. If we're going to round 3.724, which is 3 and 724 thousandths to the nearest tenth, we identify that tenths place because that's what we're rounding to. So the 7 is in the tenths place. When we look at the digit to the right, it's a 2. So it's going to stay the same. It rounds to a 3.7, a 3 and 7 tenths. We just drop the remaining digits, that 2 and the 4. After the 2 does its job, it and the 4 just drop off. We need to round 5 and 168 thousandths to the nearest hundredth. So we identify the hundredths place, because that's what we're rounding to, and the 8 tells it to go up. So instead of a 5.168, we have a 5.17. The 8 drops off. We have 5 and 17 hundredths. See? For this one, it says round to the nearest hundredth, we have two and five thousandths. Well, the five tells the digit to go up. This is the hundredths place that we're, we're rounding to. The five tells the zero to go up. So we have two and one hundredth, and the five drops off. See? So even if it's a zero, it can still tell it to go up by one. We need to round 7 and 32 hundredths to the nearest ones place. So we're not even dealing with decimals. This 3, this is the ones place, the 7. The 3 is telling the 7 to stay the same. And then the, th the decimal point, the 3 and the 2 drop off. We just have a 7. See? If we need to round 3 and 61 hundredths to the nearest ones place, we identify the ones place. It's right here on the left of the decimal. And that 6 is telling the 3 to go up to a 4, and then the decimal, the 6, and the 1 drop off. We just have 4. Okay? So think of it as if you had $3.61 and you needed to round it to the nearest dollars place, that's closer to $4 than it is to $3. See? So if thinking it as money can help you, then do that, all right? Whatever helps you succeed. We can add zeros to the right of the last decimal digit without changing the value of the number. We talked about this in the last video. If we have 7 tenths, this is what it looks like as a fraction. It's the same thing as 70 one hundredths or 700 one thousandths. And in fact, if we wanted to reduce these to their lowest terms, we could just take these zeros off. That zero cancels out that zero, and that zero cancels out that zero, and you can see we have seven tenths, seven tenths, seven tenths, see? 
So it doesn't change the value of it, even though we would read it as 70 hundredths or 700 thousandths. When we reduce them, it still comes back to 7 tenths, okay? I know it's confusing, but by the time we're done with lesson 8 and 9, you'll hopefully understand this, okay? And adding zeros will help us when we're comparing decimals to each other. So remember, this is a less than sign, this is a greater than sign, and of course, you know, that's the equal to sign. You can remember that this is less than because it almost looks like an L for less than, doesn't it? It's like, see how it looks kind of like an L? All right. So if we had 56 hundredths and 52 hundredths, this is larger. So 56 hundredths is greater than 52 hundredths. For this one, we have 42 hundredths and 423 thousandths. So what we do is we give them the same amount of digits. Because this has three digits, we want to give this one three digits. So we can add a zero at the end and then see that 420 is less than 423. See how that helped us? Here we have 603 thousandths or 61 hundredths. Which one's bigger? Well, if we give them the same number of digits by adding a zero, we can see that this is 603, this is 610. So this is the bigger one, okay? The farther we go to the right, the smaller the number gets. We have 37 and 5 hundredths, and we have 36 and 98 hundredths. So this one has 37, this one has 36, and 37 is greater than 36, so it doesn't matter that this only has 5 on this side of the decimal point, and that has 98. The ones are still bigger, see? 7 ones is still greater than 6 ones, so that one's greater. We have 4 tenths, and we have 387 thousandths. We add zeros to this one, so they both have three digits, and we can see 400 is greater than 387. See? All right? So that shouldn't be too hard, all right? And we can put decimal numbers in size order using that same method we use for comparing them. We use zeros to give every number the same amount of digits, and we can stack them with decimal points lined up. Then we can see them clearer. If it says to put in order from least to greatest, we have 1 and 7 tenths, 1 and 7 hundredths, and 1 and 107 thousandths. They all, this one has three digits to the right of the decimal point, so let's give them all three digits to the right of the decimal point. We can add a zero to the back of that one. We can add two zeros to the back of that one. And now if we stack them, we have a 1.700, a 1.070, and a 1.107. Now, because they're stacked and we have the decimal points lined up nice and pretty, we can see which one's larger, which one's the smallest, and which one's in the middle. So this is the largest one. It's got a 7 here. This one's the smallest one. It's got a 0, and this one's in the middle because it's got a 1. See? It's like comparing 700 to 70 to 107. See? Let's put these in order from least to greatest. The most amount of digits to the right of the decimal is 3. So we need to give them all three digits to the right of the decimal. So that can be a 100, can't it? And that can be a 310. We add the zero so they have the same amount of digits, and then we stack them. Now we can compare them. We can see that's the largest, and that one is the smallest. So it'd be like comparing 100 to 31 to 13 to 310, see? So now we can put them in order. We can put them in the correct order. Stacking them and adding the zeros can really help our eyes, all right? Now, in the last video, I said the skill focus was on page 107, and it was really 105, and I'm sorry about that. This one is on page 107. I make mistakes sometimes. And remember that for the less than, greater than signs, the big mouth eats the big number. It faces the bigger number, okay? Our next video is estimation and money, and if you need more help, there's these three videos that are very, very helpful, and I might explain things a little easier for you, but it's about comparing decimals and putting them in order and rounding, okay? There'll be a link to our previous video 8A where we introduced decimals, and so now I 
I hope you do well on the skill focus, and if you do, I'll see you at the next lesson. If you have trouble with it, go back. Watch this video again, okay? Don't worry. Just a few minutes out of your life to watch a video again can really help you, okay? Or watch those fourth and fifth grade videos, all right? Whatever it takes for you to be a success, you have to help yourself, okay? Be proactive. You can do it. I believe in you. Bye.